Hello, I'm Jim. So in this video, we're going to do a quick demo of a level transition system that we made in a live stream. I'll put a link to the live stream in the description of this video. And I'm just gonna do a quick overview of what is included in the system. So it'll go pretty quick. If you're fairly new to Unreal Engine, this may not go into as much detail as you want. If that's true, then I recommend that you watch the live stream. That'll give you a little bit more detail into how we created the system. And if you're looking for some more help on learning Unreal Engine and blueprints, you can check out my free course. It's on YouTube and I'll put a link for that in the description as well. And this course will teach you all the basics that you need to get started in Unreal Engine and start making games on your own. So first I'll start by just doing a quick demo of what we have here. So we can see here that we're in this square room. And if I walk up to this door, a loading screen will come up and then I'll be transported to this T-shaped room. And from here, there are two more doors, one on either side of the T. And if I go into this one, I'll be transported into this U-shaped room and I can walk over to the door on the other side and go into that one, and I'll be transported to the other side of the T. And all these doors can go back and forth, so if I go on this one, I'll be on this side, and that one will lead back over there, and then this one I can go back to that starting room. So this is a fairly easy system to implement. I'll just walk you through. We just have really four things that we needed for this. The first one, probably the easiest, is just a loading screen. And the only thing I really did here is I created an animation on my loading screen called Fade In Out. And all we're doing is grabbing the render opacity of our canvas and we're fading it in, waiting half a second, and then fading it back out. And the point of this is really just to have a little bit smoother transition between the levels so that the player doesn't see the level actually being loaded. But the loading screen doesn't have that much to it. We just have an image, which is just a black background. And then we have some text in the bottom that just says loading. So that's all there is to this. And then in our level, we have two actors. We're gonna put these both near wherever we want there to be an entrance or an exit to a level. So we have this actor called transition from, and this will be what starts the transition. And then we have another actor called transition to, and this will be what ends the transition. So really we just need these two actors, transition from, transition to, and then we'll also need to use our game instance class so that we can pass some information between the two levels. So if you're not familiar with the game instance class, again, I recommend you just go check out my free course. We talk about this in the course and the uses, or you can try to find another course that's about this specifically and what it would be used for. So I'm gonna start with the transition from, and all we have here are just two static mesh components. One of them I'm calling void. This is what holds the collision so that we can transition between the levels. And then we just have a door frame just to signify that there's a door. Now you can set this up however you want. You don't have to do it like this. If you wanted to have just invisible level transitions, maybe it's a outdoor area and you want it to just look like the player is moving between separate parts of the outdoor area, you could set it up differently. I did this mainly just so you could have a clear visual representation in your level of where each of the transitions would be. And for my void, which is handling the interaction, I just went here and I set collision to overlap all. And this way we can create an overlap event for this specific component. Here I have a begin overlap event for the void. And the first thing I'm gonna do is cast to my game instance so I can get a variable in the game instance called transition name. And I'm gonna set a variable that's named the same thing on this actor. I'm gonna set whatever variables there to the transition name in the game instance. So we're basically passing some information from this transition from actor to our game instance. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create my loading widget, but this is just visual. You don't even really need this. You could get rid of this. And then I have a set timer by function name on a function called level transition. And this timer is gonna be for 0.25 seconds, which is the same amount of time that the loading screen widget takes to fade in. So this just allows that really clean transition to the loading screen 
where then we could load in the next level. You don't really need any of this. If you wanted to, you could just call level transition right after you pass that variable in but this just allows it to look a little bit nicer for the player. Then I have this level transition and we have another variable on our transition from actor called target level name. And we're just gonna open level by name of that level. So really we only have two variables on this actor. We have a transition name and a target level name. And one thing you'll notice is that both of these are set to instance editable. And that's so that we can place these in the world and then we can set the information that we want on these actors directly in our editor. So we can see here on this one, our transition name is level two start and our target level name is level two. So this is gonna transfer us to level two. When we get into that level, we're gonna be looking for these transition two actors and we can see that they also have a variable called transition name, which would be identical to the one that we had on the transition from. So essentially we're passing this information into game instance from our transition from, we're gonna load the new level and then once that new level is loaded, as we know, when the level is loaded, one of the first things that's loaded is our game mode. If you're not familiar with what the game mode class does, again, I recommend checking out my free YouTube course. Otherwise, you could look at the Unreal Engine documentation, but essentially we're gonna load into our game mode and the very first thing I wanna do is get an, a reference to my game instance. I'm gonna set that as a variable so I could use it elsewhere in this actor. And then immediately after that, I'm gonna call this function that I called move to transition point. And if we open that up, I'll walk you through really quickly what's happening. So the first thing I wanna do is check this transition name on my game instance. And if it's null, which is the default value, we're not gonna do anything. And this would allow us to set the player location upon loading. And then if they're not coming from another level, for instance, when the game is very first loaded up, or maybe after a cutscene, you want things to be handled differently. We just don't wanna move the player at all. But if this transition name is not null, which means it has a variable that we pass into it, we're gonna get this false string. And then off this false string, I wanna get all actors of class, and I'm gonna find everything that's called transition two in the world. And then I'm gonna take that array, and I'm gonna cycle through, and I'm gonna check that the transition name on my transition two actor is equal to the transition name on my game instance. And then if it is, we'll call some additional functionality. And in this case, what we wanna do is we wanna get the world transform of our transition to actor that has this matching variable. And then we're gonna get our player character, get the root location, and then set world location and rotation. And we're gonna pass in the location and rotation of this actor. And if you're not following so far, essentially what we're doing is we're finding the transition to in the world that has the same name as the variable that we passed into the game instance. And then we're just moving our player to that location. And this allows you to create a very dynamic system that you can use over and over again in your world. We also put an arrow variable on our transition too, so we could set the rotation when the player moves into that level. And the last thing, and this is where if you watch the live stream, I made a few mistakes and it took me a little while to kind of get this right, but you really want to be careful in your naming convention of these transition names. So your target level names are going to be pretty straightforward. In my case, I just have level one, two, and three. But when you're setting this transition name variable, I recommend that you create some type of system where you can keep track of what the names are. So in this case, what I'm doing is I'm transitioning to level two and I wanna to get to the starting point of that level. And we can see the transition two in this level one is called level one exit. So this is the exit of level one. If I go to level two, we can see I have three of these transition from actors and three of these transition to actors. And if I look at this one that's right here at the entrance, I have my transition from and the transition name is level one exit, which is the same as the one that was in the last level. And the target level name is level one. So this transition from will take me to level one and load up level one exit, which is this transition to here. And then this transition from is called level two start, 
which we notice is our transition to actor transition name here. So this is where you just need to be really careful in the way you're naming them and make sure that you create some type of system where you can tr keep track of where each of them is going. And that's pretty much all that you need for this system. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments or you can head to my Discord. The Discord community is growing more each day and there's plenty of other developers there to communicate with and collaborate with. And it's become a very helpful space for many other developers. So I do recommend that you check out the Discord if you're not already in there. And I'll put a link to that in the description as well. I hope you learned something today and I'll see you in my next video.